Hello wonderful interpreters, this is another video update, thank you for tuning in. Looks like Elena responded to a protest made about My Language Link, their apparent successful bidder. And this is something that they released on June 5th, okay, at 2 p.m., and um, they extended uh, the temporary telehealth payment policies to June 30th, 2021, next year. That's a year from now. Um, it says the original expiration of July 3rd, 2020 has been extended until next year. But certainly, you know, a year seems to be a little excessive. Looks like, you know, as if they were trying to test this telehealth, you know, telephonics and video. But that's just, you know, an opinion. Put it out there, you know, see what you think about it. Um, and then, but see, um, on June 11th, 2020, okay, uh, that was last Thursday, an agency owner, which name I'm going to conceal or concealed right here, I concealed their name, uh, you know, shared with me this protest that they got. Uh, actually, they got this letter to the protest that they submitted to LNI, and this is a response. And so we're going to read this whole response from LNI, which is not the whole response that they got, by the way. Uh, this is page three out of three, as you see right here. But this is something that we're going to read, uh, you know, and I divided uh, this response in three steps. And so let's go with number one right here. Issue number two, a matter of bias and or conflict of interest. LNI's understanding of this issue is regarding the appearance of potential conflict of interest and the matter of bias between the apparent successful bidder, My Language Link, and local 1671 leaders, one of Washington Federation of State Employees local unions. Express concern about a contract that Wolfsey has with One Lingua, an interpreter company. Now, if you remember uh, the video that I made exposing uh, their web portal agenda in, in one lingua, you saw this contract dated uh, February uh, 2017, okay, where uh, Leroy Mold and, um, you know, local 1671 leaders agreed to sign a contract with one lingua. You saw how they had wonderful things like um, you know, they were going to have an Interpreters United hiring portal powered by one lingua. Now, let's read this right here. Council 20A asks me, Washington Federation of State Employees, hiring portal. Welcome, Interpreters United, Local 1671. Now, if you need to stop and, and actually, you know, pause this video and read, please go ahead and do so. But look, requesters, interpreters, you know, Interpreters United hiring hall. Now, this portal right here, you know, they have some information about interpretation services in Washington State. If you scroll the way down, you see right here, One Lingua LLC, Interpreters Inc. And so this was actually from 2016. This was actually made in the works. And so there you have it now. Does this mean that uh, One Lingua in my language link is the same company? No, but you know they're linked by the same owner of One Lingua, which is a registered owner of My Language Link. So this is definitely worrisome for us LNI interpreters. What the Contracts and Purchasing Office did, did to review this issue. I interviewed the RFP coordinator to get the facts from the agency. This is Tammy Wilson, okay, responding to this protest. Um, and she interviewed the RFP coordinator and it says right here, the RFP coordinator for LNI is Susan Campbell. You know about this lady if you are an LNI interpreter or if you've seen one of my videos. Now it says right here, finding prior to release of the RFP, LNI met with multiple stakeholders, including union members, interpreters, various advisory groups, keep that in mind, and providers to ensure our solicitation would meet their needs. LNI did not discuss proposals received with local 1671 leaders which is an affiliate of Wolfsey that currently represents interpreters who work for the Healthcare Authority, Department of Social and Health Services, the Department of Children, Youth and Families, or any other stakeholder. So, did LNI discuss proposals with local 1671 leaders? Do you remember this? Uh, this is from a video that I made, 
exposing the web portal agenda, one lingua, and this is a presentation that Milena Calderari Waldron shared with me before we met uh, with Susan Campbell when I was part of Whoopsie. And so in this scheduling system, she was talking about how one lingua, okay, municipal courts, about seven courts do software as a service with one lingua for online scheduling system and automated invoicing. I'm going to have links to all these videos and all this information in the description box of this video. Well, by their own admission, this is what happened right here. Look, this is when they were so happy that El and I had announced the apparent successful bidder as My Language Link, based in Connecticut, out of the state, by the way. But look at this, look at this. What we do know, however, is that My Language Link is not universal language services, and that El and I has listened to our union's concerns about all of our past problems with ULS. So you did complain to El and I about ULS. But look at this, they made sure that they had their boy right here, Eduardo Zaldibar, Okay, so that way they would ensure they had a company and, of course, my language link, which is, uh, you know, registered by Eduardo Zaldibar. So they, they had their two companies bidding for the contract just in case because, you know, they can't lose. And then, ah, Universal Language Service. Of course, they were bidding for the LNI contract as well. So you made sure, Local 1671, that you let LNI know about all of your past problems. Okay, with ULS, because you did not want LNI to choose ULS while you were pushing for your boys right here, My Language Link and Eduardo Zaldivar, One Lingua e Interpreter. So, did they talk about this? Who knows? Who knows? Now let's go to point number three. LNI's relationship with Wolfsey is as a union that represents a number of state employees and does not preclude LNI from entering into a contract with a company that has a relationship with Wolfsey or their affiliate Local 1671. So we're going to review this a little later. This is, you know, the, the conflict of interest right here. Look at this. Desperation, manipulation, hypocrisy. Look, this is an email sent on June 15th by Local 1671, where they're promoting an interpreter town hall with Speaker Emeritus Frank Chops. And so they're living in the past, desperate for your help and your attention. Why? Emeritus, for those that might not know, means former. So Speaker Emeritus Representative Frank Chop. Our union is excited to announce a virtual town hall on the topic of jobs and funding for the interpreters with the Speaker Emeritus of the Washington State House of Representatives, Frank Chop. He served as a Speaker of the House in Washington for 19 years and he's still one of the, one of the most influential uh, leaders living in the past. And then look at this, desperate for your help and attention. But, um, you know, they have a history of working with politicians to get their agendas, um, you know, funded and, and made a reality. So they're, they're, they're reaching to this guy because they're so desperate. They're losing numbers as we speak. So they want this guy to talk to interpreters and they want you to listen and tune in. But there is a catch for this, okay? This is why they're doing this. Manipulation. Look at this. 300 one-time coronavirus grant. As a union member of Interpreters United, you are eligible to apply for a one-time grant of 300 in the form of a Fred Meyer gift card that you can use to buy groceries and essential supplies for your family. This grant is made available thanks to Interpreters United powerful union family. There you go. To apply, by the way, oh, this looks too good to be true, Contact Pam Carl, Whoopsie's member mobilization coordinator, via email. You must be a union member to apply for this grant, and you can sign up here. So there it is. No, this is not a free grant. You have to sign that card so they ensure that you're going to be paying those dues and they get that money back from that grant they're giving you, quote-unquote, grant. The hypocrisy. Now, this is grant. This is just, you know, grant. They say right here, we are now pushing for all publicly funded remote interpreting appointments to remain within Washington State. 
as opposed to language companies outsourcing this work and exploiting interpreters based in other countries. For real? While, by the way, you have your boys from Language Link Corp, okay, out of the state in Connecticut, okay, registered as a foreign profit corporation. This is grand, of course, and registered by their boy, Eduardo Zaldivar. How would local 1671 leaders negotiate for LNI interpreters, you know, if they were to win this by any chance? So let's start with this. You know, this is communication uh, that I had with Milena Waldron, and this is from February 2. You saw this in videos before, so I'm not going to read all of it. You, could, uh, you, you feel free to pause it if you need to. They proudly bargained away mileage for their interpreters. Look at this. Regarding mileage, we don't have it because we didn't want it. We collectively bargained to remove mileage. It was our choice. Okay, and their excuse is that they bargain to be paid for late cancellations and no shows, which LNI doesn't have. Oh, really? So you're gonna tell me that even in the DSHS world, you know, you're gonna have way more shows, way more no shows, sorry, and way more cancellations than the opportunity that you would have every job to collect mileage. Sounds clear to me that you are going to drive more frequently, then you're going to have no shows or cancellations. It's just basic logic, but whatever. So those are the geniuses, and this is what they negotiate. And they proudly, they proudly say it, by the way. So this is the collective bargaining agreement they have with the state of Washington, Local 1671, Interpreters United. It says right here, the healthcare authority will generally remit funds necessary to pay for an interpreter's services to the coordinating entity within 30 calendar days. In some instances, instances it may be necessary for the HCA to take more time than 30 days to process remittance to the coordinating entity. But LNI interpreters get paid biweekly with direct deposit, I might add. Okay, so, yeah, why would you want this? Now, in-person interpreting services get paid 40 to 20 per hour effective July 1st, 2020. That's supposed to 87 cents a minute, 50 to 20 an hour that we get. And then when it comes to block appointments, look at this. Interpreters will be paid a minimum of $31 per hour for block time appointments. And this is the equivalent to work conditioning, work hardening, pain management programs, two hours or more. But wait a minute. So they get 40 to 20, $10 less than LNI interpreters for the regular appointments. But when they do block time appointments, they said they told the state, oh, it's okay, we don't need 42, we could just take 31. That's fine. Really? But you see, LNI interpreters, we get 50 to 20 if we complete an hour. And we, if we have work conditioning, work hardening, pain management program, keep your bargaining skills to yourselves. So these are the leaders, Milena Calderari Waldron and Leroy Mold. Now, how do they gain influence? Well, this is the interpreter advisory group, and this is actually ingrained in their collective bargaining agreement. This is how they make these laws to ensure that they insert their leaders into the DSHS advisory committee every time. Look at this. Look at this. Um, volunteer interpreter advisory group to provide input to the state on its duties. Uh, WAC rules and regulations for the certification of DSHS spoken language interpreters. And this is an 18-member advisory group to include not-so-retired leaders, okay, um, in this advisory group. Look at this. Look at this. They make sure that this advisory group should have four representatives from the union, of which at least two will be spoken language interpreters working under this agreement. So wait a minute, they're going to have people that are not interpreters because at least two should be interpreters? Okay. And then at least one member of every subcommittee of the interpreter advisory group shall be a union representative. 
Look at uh, this is Milena Calderari Waltron. Like I said, this is nothing personal. This is just you know exposing some of the things that they want to just you know ignore. Now this is look what it says right here. Current Secretary Ruth Medina left. Former quote unquote former Secretary Milena Calderari Waltron and Organizing Committee Chair Sixta Castillo. This is November twenty fourth, two thousand nineteen. But when the elections came and went by and we lost and they had new leaders, uh, she was supposed to pretty much quit, not be a leader anymore. I mean, she told me herself, I I'm not going to be a secretary. I'm not going to be, you know, in this union as a leader for any longer. I've done it for 20 years. Uh, sorry, not 20, for 10 years. For 10 years. So I'm, I'm tired. I'm done. That's what she said. Well, look at this. February 8th. This is actually this year. First day of our LNI Local 1671 Joint Organizing Blitz. We are in Tacoma knocking on doors and spreading the message of union benefits and solidarity. Come join us. And look who we, who we have right here. You know, active. Milena Waldron. Leroy. I'm not a leader anymore. Mold. Right here. And, of course, Council Representative Michael Abate. Look. Look. This is Rod Palmquist quote-unquote, interim organizing director. This is Wolfsey staff. They are part of, uh, they're part of their staff. Why am I showing you this picture? Because I want you to remember this guy, which I have talked about in my videos before. Let's go back to the advisory committee. The advisory committee right here, these are the local 1671 members in them. Feel free to pause this as you need Look at this, Leroy Mold, a freelance interpreter, representing interpreters, and Wolfsey asked me, well, wait a minute, I thought you were not part of the union as a leader anymore. I thought you were done because for 10 years, you, you worked so hard. Look at Larissa House, representing interpreters, and asked me, of course. Milena Calderari Waldron, interpreter, representing interpreters, and Wolfsey asked me. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Look, Rod Palmquist, representing Wolfsey, asked me, organizing director, and they made sure that in the law, their collective bargaining agreement, they had somebody representing the council in the advisory committee. Why? He told me himself last year by November, okay, that this was the first time he would be working with interpreters. He was just an organizer, but why is he part of the advisory committee? Because they need to ensure they perpetuate their agenda. Okay? And look. Look at the subcommittees right here. And this is very important. Decertification Request Review Committee. And look who's here. Larissa House, Local 1671, leader and member. But Leroy Mould also. Former, quote-unquote former, Local 1671 president. Not a union leader anymore. Rod Palmquist, Wolfsey Organizing Director, not an interpreter. And Milena Calderari Waldron, you know, former Local 1671 Secretary and Union Leader, part of the Professional Development Committee, the committee that reviews your applications to submit continuing education credits, to, to teach these classes and all that, and to also award these credits if you took the classes. But, but I guess she's not a union leader anymore, but she's here. What happens if you get submitted to, uh, to get your license revoked, to be decertified? Look at the people right here, you know, that have a say on whether or not you keep your certification for whatever reason. Leroy Mold, that doesn't like Elena Interpreters, and Rod Palmquist, an organizing director that's not even an interpreter. Wow. I mean, this is just amazing. But I wanted you to see this, okay? Now, these are some notes from the LTC Advisory Committee from June 17th, 2019. Most recent numbers from LNI, 45% of their interpreter roster will not be certified after July 29th. This was last year. They talked about this, okay? Now, look at this. LTC Advisory Committee meeting on October 14, 2019. That LNI slash ULS lost several hundred interpreters, but the pool is increasing. They said LNI down approximately 500 interpreters. 
and have built back about a third of that number. Okay? Keep that in mind. L and I lost about 500 interpreters. They advocated for this to happen. Okay? I was told by former organizing director, nothing against him, Tim, he was actually one of the few people there that really cared about nine interpreters, that they were upset that DSHS extended the credentials until July because they wanted people to be held accountable. And those that did not complete their credits, they had for years, you know, even especially LNI interpreters that are so indifferent, they need to learn. Yeah, you wanted LNI interpreter to be decertified. You know, you wanted these interpreters because they do not agree with your agenda. So you wanted only people that like you from your union so you could have an election and get certified for the LNI contract. That's what happened. But hey, it's not just my opinion. You look at the facts and you decide for yourself. So let's go back to this. Let's go back to this. Point number three. LNI's relationship with Wolfsey is as a union that represents a number of state employees. This is the response from Tammy Wilson. They would know. Let's see that collective bargaining agreement between Wolfsey and the state of Washington, Washington Federation of State Employees and the state of Washington. Whoa, you know, a number of state agencies signed this contract because Wolfsey, you know, uh, represents them legally. Oh, and labor and industries and labor and industries, of course. So they would know. It's a relationship they have because Wolfsey represents a lot of LNI employees. Now, let's go back to, you know, the last of that email that they sent on June 15th, okay? Interpreters United is a union of interpreters run by interpreters for interpreters, for the many, not the few. Now, I think this is how this should read, a union run by their council for their own privileged few. Yeah, because they call me and you the privileged few. If you are a small business owner, a small agency, not ULS, no, not language link, not their my language link. No, if you are a small business owner that has two, three, you know, interpreters in, in, in your uh, business, they call you the privileged few. They call me an independent interpreter that's never had an agency because I want to stick to bill independently and directly with LNI. They call me the privileged few. Let's put that to the test, shall we? The real privileged ones loving your dues money. What is this about? Mm. This is a distribution of union dues pretty much by all the unions under their council, Council 28, Interpreters United. But this is actually Interpreters United and how much goes to Wolfsey paid staff employees. Look at this. Look at this. Our monthly union dues are allocated approximately as follows. 68% goes to Council 28, Wolfsey, okay? 23% to International and only 8% to Local 1671 for expenses. When Anastasio and I were running for this, you know, Anastasio even said it. He even brought it up at a statewide meeting back in January 2019, I believe. Why don't we keep more money? And they were like, no, you would have to go to a convention and vote for that and all the locals in the nation, nationwide, has to be voted anonymously. That's almost impossible to happen. Why is it that Wolfsey doesn't want to give their local unions more money and only gives them back 8% of what they pay for dues? So, because local unions should have more money for bargaining teams, for, you know, volunteers to get time loss, for all of that. Let's see. Hmm... Look at this. Union reporting history. State, county, uh, Washington Federation of State Employees. I want you to see this. This is Wolfsey. And look at the membership dropping. This is why. <laughs> you know, look. September 27th, 2017, 35,000. Okay. And they had a slight increase in 2018, 36. But then in 2018, after Janus versus Axme, the Supreme Court decision that, you know, uh, made it mandatory for union dues to be voluntarily paid, look what happened. They dropped to 31,000 in 2019, 
31,000. So yeah, and let's see the distribution of that money that they get because look at that. They got, you know, total assets, $16 million. Look at this. Schedule 12, disbursements to employees. Ah, look at this Michael Abate, council representative. Hey, I'm not hating on anybody for making money, by the way. These are their jobs. But when they call me the privileged few, by the way, we're just, you know, hundreds of interpreters in the LNI system. We're not, we're not a few a bunch of interpreters. You know, we're not just a small group, a few. We're a lot of people. But look what they make. Michael Abate, 83000 Okay. Let's go to the next one. Remember Tim Tharp, organizing director? What happened to you, Tim? You know, it's like he disappeared. Tim right here, you know, uh, look, 121,223. Wow. Council Representative Thomas Jennifer, 93,000. Okay. Rod Palmquist, interim organizing director, $105,000. Back then, he was the strategic coordinator. Whatever that means, Megan Park Field Services Director, 130,126. Mm. That must be nice. That's okay. Not hating on you. Go, girl. Go get that money, right? Dennis Eagle, lobbyist, director, leg and political, 128,000. There you go. Let's go to another one. Oh, do you remember uh, Frida Brown, organizer, knocking on your doors as an NI? Uh, organizer for Whoopsie, 80,000 right here. Her husband, Jimmy, which I uh, had a good relationship with, you know, when I was uh, organizing back then with them. Look, 80,000, okay? <laughs> Sherry Ann, Sherry Ann Burke, labor advocate, 103,000. Melissa Carpenter, field supervisor, 102,000. Local 1671 members, those are your union dues at work. You know, you only get 8%, but these people, look at all they got, right? Look, Sean Dannon, 104,000. Ah, Greg Devereaux, executive director of Wolfsey, 179,046 cents. Oh, look at that. And Leanne, oh, Leanne Kunzi right here, this lady, she, she was the deputy executive director last year. Now she became at the executive director because Greg Devereaux is not there anymore. He maybe stepped down. I don't know exactly what happened with him, but he's not there anymore. She was making 137, 137,000 as a deputy director. Now she's going to get a bump. And oh, you remember this lady? Elizabeth Larson, Liz Larson, this lady that was uh, filling out missing information from members in the election. Go watch that video. I'll, I'll leave the link in the description box. 134,000. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. There you go. Human Resources Director, 105,000. So there you go. And then you may think, you know, well, you know, they get that money because uh, that's for political action. Well, let's see. Political activities and lobbying. 700,000. Less than a million dollars in political activities and lobbying. Okay? However, when you look at this, total... Employee disbursements, eight million, more than eight million dollars. Less than a million for political activities and lobbying because some of you think that this union spends millions and millions of dollars lobbying and trying to pass laws and stuff like that. Look what they spent. I mean, that's still a considerable amount of money, but not as much money uh, as they paid themselves for their salaries. Okay? So, you are, Council 28, Wolfsey, the real privileged few. So, spare me your hypocrisy trying to attack workers like me. Full disclosure, this is my 2019 income covering LNI appointments. And I don't have any problems showing you this. I don't have to. I don't really care what you may think about me. Some people accusing me that I made $100,000 last year or whatever. Look, man, this is how much I made with LNI. Granted, I had a couple of recoupments, you know, that wasn't a good year. I would have made probably 40000 45000 Now, 
Uh, you know, to be uh, totally honest, you know, my income is not only coming from L and I. I do work for you know uh, ULS and some other interpreting you know jobs that I get, but still, my income is not near as high as these people. <laughs> Look at this. No, this is how much I make, and I am the privileged few. You for real? So wake up, L and I interpreter. Wake up, they are coming for your job because they do not care that you are making 30000 or less or $20,000. they are not here trying to be the union for the nine interpreters to give you more access to jobs. They want their scheduling system so you get less appointments part-time. They don't care. All they want you to do is pay your dues because that's why I opted out. Those of you, uh, some of you asked me over the phone, can you provide your opt-out letter? Well, there it is. Now, the real reason why they're rushing LNI to confirm my language link as the successful bidder, I'll tell you what it is. Right here, you know, us. But not just this group right here, all of us. You and me, everybody that has been standing up to them. We went to Olympia. You know, we were formed as a union labor organization in February 5th. We went to Olympia. And by March 4th, almost less than a month later, you know, we already had meetings with legislators. You know, we told them we advocated for in-person appointments. We told them, look, we need to fix this law. We need to push this implementation back some, some more time because LNI is not ready. We're not ready. We don't have a union. You know, there are things that are not clear. And uh, we pushed to reform, you know, uh, the, the health uh, insurance, you know, law they wanted to pass. We pushed to have in-person interpreting as the main modality and to push the system to December 1st instead of September to be implemented. Okay and to have a dual system. We push for all that, and finally, Senator King from Yakima has a personal connection with Anastasio. You know the story. They adopted the amendment, not the way we wanted to because we're not the union, but we got some work done. So by December 1st, they have to submit a report to the legislature, okay, talking about whether or not they had barriers to implementation and what are the recommendations for removing the barriers? If not, we would have to go back in January and completely, hopefully, once and for all, change this law. So they know they're behind. They know the coronavirus kicked everyone's butt, especially theirs. And they want LNI to confirm my language link because they want that scheduling system desperately because they need those dues monies so they could keep their salaries and their cushy jobs at the council level while you and I struggle to get appointments. We had a broadcast with the Guild of Pacific Northwest Employees. Pastora was there uh, giving a, a mental health session. And these guys right here, you know, talked about how they defeated Ask Me Whoopsie Local 1671. It is possible, you know, they're not as big as you think they are. You know, they're just, uh, you know, right now sticking to the past, not understanding that unions need to reform themselves if they want to succeed and that independent groups as, such as ourselves are the future of this movement, the labor movement. You know, we got the flyers, we sent them to you, the beautiful flyers that we got. Uh, you received them on the mail. Uh, you know how to fill out the card. You know, we have been receiving these flyers back from interpreters from all over Seattle, Five, Everett, okay, Kent, right, Shoreline, Auburn. You know, every day I go to the post office and we get, you know, more than a few back, and um, I thank you because you are realizing what this moment is. And these are not the only cards that we've got. Of course, we were doing in-person uh, workshops, and we got tons and tons of cards, so we're getting to that number, you know. And look at this, you know, look at this, look at this. So, yeah, this is the time for us to do this. Now, I'm going to have links in the description box. This is how you open the description box right here. Click Show More to open the description box and read everything. Then scroll to the timestamps right here so you could jump through topics of interest. Okay, so my final thoughts. So there you have it. I think, you know, what I want to say to you is this is the 12th hour. This is the midnight cry, so to speak. 
you know, and uh, Wolfsey asks me, Local 1671, they're desperate. They know their time is up, but they're going to do everything they can, the resources they have, to make sure that they win this election. You know, they're so desperate, people from the Council International uh, ask me, they have intervened now, they, they rebranded themselves, and they have asked me, impregnated into all of their branding right now. Why? Because they have failed. And, and they have to go crazy against the little people like us, like me, the few people in our board, seriously, you know, going crazy against workers that want to defend their jobs. You know, I don't care if you are an agency owner or just an independent interpreter. The past is the past. They have duped everyone. They have deceived everyone. They have broken their promises with everyone. At one time, I believe they were the good option so we could have a local union under them because it made sense what they proposed. And had we come together, we would have had the opportunity, but we did it. And so I think this is the time. So we stop bickering and pointing fingers, accept responsibility and accountability and do this selection, make it happen, okay? We cannot go back to the way things were because we throw a tantrum. That's not how it works. We need to gain representation first, and then we could see what we could do about that law that was not good for anybody. They successfully eliminated agencies from the LNI system with bogus claims, and now they're going after the independent interpreter like myself. We're all affected by this, and we're not going to go anywhere by infighting. We're gaining the support, and we're going to get there. You know, uh, it doesn't matter how many people support right now. We're going to get that number, but we're going to get it faster, quicker, okay? And we could get some work done faster if we all sign these cards, get together, get this election going, defeat the bully, okay? Thank you, wonderful interpreters. You know, we're going to be uh, posting what's next for our movement because we're not going to stay silent with this decision by LNI. It doesn't look, it doesn't say that they will confirm my language link. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but they're saying there's no conflict of interest. We'll see about that. But I'll, I'll tell you this, we already have some strategies in place and we need your help with these strategies. Thank you. Have a great day. God bless and until the next video.